More than four billion people live across this vast continent called Asia. And we are telling their stories. On this edition, harvesting birds nest the traditional way. Is fast becoming a dying trade in the Philippines and elsewhere in the region. And coming to the rescue for those in need. Medical boats in Thailand are now able to respond quickly and provide immediate treatment for emergencies in the remote islands. I'm Martin Lowe, and this is Assignment Asia. Welcome to the program. Mention bird's nest soup, and most people think of high prices, and what some say are its health-giving and rejuvenation qualities. Indeed, for decades, the lucrative nature of the delicacy has prompted many people to turn to harvesting bird's nest, sometimes at great risk to themselves. In El Nido, located in the Philippines' Palawan province, some have been harvesting bird's nest for generations. But, as Barnaby Lowe discovered, many have chosen to switch professions, partly due to the risks involved, but also because more jobs are becoming available in a booming tourism industry. It's considered the Philippines' last ecological frontier. It's also been named the world's best island, Palawan. Among its many gems is this town, El Nido. Remote yet accessible, it is both a backpacker's and honeymooner's paradise. Best known for its towering limestone cliffs. For over a century before El Nido's tourism boom, however, these rock formations have been a source of livelihood for locals. Nemisho Abrea, now 66 years old, had no doubt in his mind that he would be following in his father's footsteps. Who was, in their local language, what's known as pushador. Someone who collects nests of tiny birds known as swiftlets, or what most of the rest of us would call bird's nest. And, as I was about to learn, it isn't a job for the faint-hearted. As experienced as the Misha was, sea and weather conditions were unforgiving for his age. No problem, it seems, though, for his 34-year-old son, Julie, who's been a bushador since he was a teenager. We're <laughs> It took Julie no more than 20 minutes to disappear from our view. At what point he'd gone in a cave, or if it did at all, I couldn't tell. Moments later though, Okay, I think it's dead. 
ano nung nakaraan taon pa yan? Oh. Oh. Bo- bo- ang iba sir, bawo na kasi mula rin lang. Yung ngayon, bo- mabukutin yun. Oh. Oh. So, ito, so, sir, pagsu- so, mababenta ba yan? Oh, sir, pagsuot ito ulit sir, bago, yung puti na yung puti. Ah, okay, okay. magpapalitan oh, na. Magpapalit, oh, papalitan ang bahay nila. Ah, okay. Ay, madami ba? Wala sir, tatlong bahay lang. Yan lang? Eh, wala pa isang gramo yan eh. Meron ba? Meron, sobra na sir. Sobra ba? Oo. Oh, ano kayo sir? Five, uh-huh. five grams na ito. Nahirapan ba kayo? Oo oh, sir. Maybe so. But the Misha says conditions can become even more dangerous. Yung lubid yan, kumisa na pasok pa. Kulang pa yan ang lubid yan, palalim. Yan. Saka yung iba, hangwi talaga. Mahirap din daanan. Judging from what I witnessed though, I didn't think there was any way I could see with my own eyes how they spot and collect the nests. So apparently there is a slightly less risky location where these guys can harvest bird's nest. It's over there. And you know, I thought I could go in with them, um, but they said it's likely I can't do it. But I could try, they said. So I did. Hold on, it's not easy. Ah. Before I knew it, Julie had found a nest. Zero. And then another one. I thought one of them would scale the wall, but they came prepared. Any higher though, someone would have had to climb, which you can imagine is even riskier. Nag-aingat din kami. May mga kaibigan kayo na na-aksidente na? Oo. Hmm. Rodrigo Tamayosa doesn't live far from the Misho and Julie. Just like the Abreas, men in his family had been pushadors for generations. But not anymore. Yung pag ko po sa, ano, sa bato, tapos... Pagpasok ko sa loob, may lubid sa gitna eh. Malaki yung butas. Tapos may lubid sa gitna naka, ano doon, naka habang na doon. Dati na yun doon. Tapos maluwag, maluwang yung butas. Pag akyat ko ganyan, hawakan ko sana yung lubid. Dito nakakapit sa bato ganyan. Naputol yung batong ginakapitan ko. Dito, nag-aabot ako ng lubid. Yung lubid hindi ko paabot. Inaabot ko sana yung lubid. Tapos ako nagpatong na ganyan. Naputol yung ano, yung bato. Pagputo lang ba ito, nag-dawustos ako po ba? Ipigilan ko pa sana yung ano ko ba, tukod ako sa kamay ko pigilan. Ay wala na, diretso na, malakas na yung ano. Bitaw na lang ako. Hanggang sa kaligit na, naramdaman ko pa, pero pag bagsak ko, hindi ko na po alam. Wow, gano'ng kataas yun? Katursi di pa po yun, sir. Pwede kang mamatay nun, ano? Opo. May bato po sa gano, malalaking bato, magkabilaan. Bato. Doon po na ako nag-shoot sa gitna. Ano ang tumama? Ito po yung ano. Paglaglag ko po, nagasubsub ako, ito yung tumama sa ano, bato. So, yung tumama ito? Ito po. Oo. So, ngayon, ano nangyari sa'yo? <laughs> ito, ano na. Ito nag-glaze itong buto. Oh. Ito, so, putol to. Putol ito? Opo. Putol po ito. Kaya ito nag dito. Rodrigo's face is forever altered, but he survived. His brother wasn't as fortunate. Mag-isa lang po siya nag-akyat sa taas, yung kasama yan sa baba. Inirinila na ano, papano na nahulog. Doon din nalang siya dito sa bahay nyo, ano nakita mo? Sugat-sugat ng katawan. Dito po, laking sugat dito, tapos balukpot ng ganito niya. Pa, siguro na ano, banda-banda sa bato, kalaglag. Noong time na yun, naisip nyo, pwede pa siyang mabuhay. Parang lapas yung utak niya eh. May puti na naglabas sa ano niya, sugat. Kasi bilad na utak na yung naglabas na yun. 
Eh, yun. <laughs> Parang wala nang pag-asa. This happened even before Rodrigo became a buchador. He knew the dangers, but couldn't resist the income. Wala nang ibang ano ba siya eh. Magkitaan ba? Ang hirap ng buhay. Noong panahon na yun, na nagbubuchador ka, magkano ang kita? Ang siya mo, mga limang libo. Ganyan. Pero gano'ng kadalas yung limang libo na yun? Minsan, minsan, minsan. Isang beses sa isang buwan. Okay, ganyan. Ganyan lang. Before El Nido's economy turned to tourism over a decade ago. And even until today for some, a hundred dollars was hard to come by. Except during the bird's nest harvesting season, which runs from the months of December to May. For the longest time, the nests were the backbone of El Nido's economy, according to the town's mayor, Nieves Rosento. El Nido before is very popular for the sweeplets uh, bird's nest we have. So in it's it's really a lot in El Nido before. So in that's also the number one industry we have before, after for long years. So, and this is very popular also for the Chinese merchants who went here at El Nido for uh, almost 100 years. Bird's nest soup is popular among the Chinese and is one of the most expensive delicacies in the world. The nest isn't made of twigs like most nests, but of the male swiftlet saliva. It's ma made of saliva, and it takes normally 15 to 30 days that they have, uh, they, they will form um, a nest like uh, um, one, one to two inches in, in width. Ah, 15 to 30 days. Yes, 15 to 30 days. So that means they can't be harvested all the time. No, it's not. It's not. So because um, if it is quite small, um, the price of this uh, is quite very low also. But if you uh, take something like uh, 15 to 30 days, it's, uh, you, you can sell also this one in a good price. Edible bird's nests are sold anywhere from 2,500 to 10,000 US dollars a kilo in the open market. The ones El Nido produces are some of the priciest. Marami po kasing klase ang bird's nest, 100 kinds of bird's nest. Mayroong, mayroong culture, may manufactured, mayroong ding uh, nature. So ang atin ay nature, from the nature, like isda sa dagat, nature. Ito ang pinakamahal. Yes. Ang Malaysia... Pasita Paredes knows what she's talking about. She's made a living and grown her wealth out of trading bird's nests. She learned the ropes from her Chinese in-laws, including how to make bird's nest soup. You know, oddly enough, even though the harvest of bird's nest has been an industry here in El Nido, in Palawan, in the Philippines, it's hard to find a restaurant that serves genuine bird's nest soup. But we did find one. And, well, it's really good. Mm. I think that's, mm, that's bird's nest. In recent years, however, Pasita has focused more on her restaurant rather than on trading. That's because El Nido is losing its bird's nest in a rapid and irreplaceable way. Before, they said that um, it was uh, socks of nests, edible bird's nest they have. It's a socks. No, uh, and now it's just, it's just only a, a small. Hand, like a handful. A yeah. handful. As a matter of fact, I didn't see even a single swiftlet when I went into a cave with Nemesha, Julie, and a couple of other bushadors. They blame poachers for the decline in the population of swiftlets in El Nido. Ano ibig sabihin? Hindi nakakapisa. Hindi nakakapisa. Paano hindi nakakapisa? Ay, hindi na nanganganak oh, ng mga. Oo, hindi na nanganganak. 
Bakit? Kung minsan pag ano, kinukuha rin kagad. Kinukuha. Yung pugad. <laughs> yung pugad, kinukuha rin. Kailan lang bang pwedeng kunin dapat? Mga yung nangitlog sila, sir, ano, mga buwan ng May. Mayo. Yan, ang nangitlog. Mayo. Oo, nangitlog na yan sila. Isang oh. buwan yan, nangitlog sila. Ah, okay. So pag buwan na ng Mayo, bawal ng... Gusto suotin. Huwag na yung kuhain yung anong pugad. Oo. Oh. Ang kaso... Yung iba, nag-akyat din, kinukuha nila. Yun. Kaya hindi, na, hindi mapisa yung... Ayun. So, kasalanan ng tao? O yun, sir. O, kasalanan na yung tao. Oo, kumbaga. Kinukuha nila eh. Mayor Rosanto says the local government's tourism drive is also partly to blame. The habitat is now have been disturbed, yeah, because normally of the tourism industry, of course, sometimes. So, because it's really uh, very uh, sensitive birds, no? But why? I mean, if, if you're saying that this is killing the swiftlets yeah. and killing the bird's nest industry as a consequence, why open some of these caves to tourism? So, because um, it has also some potential not on tourism. Let's say um, we have some some of the tourists also would like to to see what what is the birds what is the caves if the attraction of the local birds nest industry were to compete with Alido's tourism industry it's clear who would win hands down given a choice younger locals who come from long lines of pushadors will and have gravitated toward tourism related jobs Pagkukuha po kasi ng bird's nest sa Cuiba is sobrang napakahirap. Buhay po ang nabubuis dyan. Kaya minsan po yung mga kabataan ngayon, mas gusto na po nilang kumita sa pangsimpleng magaan na pamamaraan kaysa yung mag-rest pa ng buhay nila sa Cuiba. Right now, the challenge for El Nido appears to be keeping a tradition alive but in a sustainable way. Me, as a chief executive, still we have to protect, still we have to protect this because aside from, uh, it's very historical with us, no? Because uh, the Nido, El Nido, it came from the, the word Nido, the, the siplets we have. Which means nest. Nest, yes. yes. So how do you strike a, a balance between tourism and preserving traditional industries like the bird's nest industry? So we have, we, so you know, of course, by some of the policies we are now imposing, no? So let's say for edible business, we have the open and closed season. And then uh, some areas have been uh, delegated, it's just only for one concessioner. Despite its danger and sometimes deadly nature, many pushadors will not be persuaded to leave their jobs. Some because of necessity to put food on the table. While others because of the lucrative nature of bird's nest. And while El Nido prides itself with a long tradition of hunting for bird's nests, the local government is considering turning to modern methods of production. Especially since over 90% of the world's bird's nests come from factories. It's a way to keep El Nido's bird's nest gatherers safe, as well as ensure the town's continued reputation as a jewel in Palawan's crown. For Simon Asia, I'm Barney Below in El Nido, Palawan, the Philippines. In recent years, traditional methods of harvesting birds' nests have been replaced by new farming techniques, most notably in the form of birds' nest factories. Located mainly in Southeast Asia, especially in Indonesia, these factories emulate cave environments and try to attract swiftlets by blasting music through loudspeakers. Next on Assignment Asia, saving lives and raising safety standards.
stories of hope, triumph, innovation, and change. We uncover the truth and go great lengths to tell a story. Get to know ordinary people with extraordinary stories and see Asia from an Asian perspective. This is Assignment Asia. Expect the unexpected. Culture Express. See the world in color. In one of Southeast Asia's worst ever holiday disasters, 47 Chinese tourists drowned when a boat sank in Thailand in 2018. Many more people lose their lives as a result of what some say are lax safety standards in the country. However, the Thai government is determined to win back confidence in an industry worth billions of US dollars a year. One bold venture, as I found out, is its floating doctor service, which can sometimes mean the difference between life and death. <laughs> A scuba diver has decompression sickness. It's life-threatening. It's too serious for this medical post on a small Thai island. He needs to get to hospital as quickly as possible. The floating doctor, a high-speed medical boat, is summoned to carry him to the mainland and specialist help. In an area that attracts thousands of divers, swimmers and snorkelers, drownings are amongst the most common accidents but many who would otherwise have perished now survive to go home to their families and loved ones. Not every mission means a life save, but the boat has had remarkable success. เดี๋ยวมุกคนไข้ที่ไหนครับเดี๋ยวมุกคนไข้ที่ไหนครับเดี๋ยวมุกคนไข้ที่ไหนครับเดี๋ยวมุกคนไข้ที่ไหนครับ
ให้ให้กับนักท่องเที่ยวที่มาเที่ยวกับประเทศไทยได้อย่างไรนั่นคือนั่นคือวัตถุประสงค์หลักนะครับ Sometimes medical assistance is close by and can be given quickly but on distant islands like this it can be hours away This boat can reach people in need at high speed, providing instant treatment and quickly transporting a patient to specialist facilities. Early morning, streams of tourists board boats to the islands from a pier on the mainland. Almost five million people take holidays in this area each year. Many are divers and snorkelers who come here for the clear waters, coral reefs. And wide varieties of fish. The majority are from China. People who vividly remember the tragedy and loss of life when the Phoenix sank. So, for this thing, China has also a little bit of a feeling. But when you come here, you find that it's not. If you want to be careful, you won't go on the boat. Um, it's just they want us to go on the boat, we won't go on it. With more people visiting Thailand each year, popular resorts are becoming crowded, leading the adventurous to seek out more remote areas. When disaster strikes, that isolation can lead to dire consequences. But health officials say the floating doctor is changing all that, and they believe that they can cut the number of deaths from accident and illness by up to 25%. The Thai Navy provides doctors to supplement the medical teams. We have a doctor who has come here. We can do a lot of things. And there are people who help us to help us more. Because we can take people who help us. We can help 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 people who help us. นะครับเพื่อที่จะให้เรือลำนี้เปรียบเสมือนแปลงเป็นห้อง ICU หรือห้องฉุกเฉินห้องย่อยๆสักห้องหนึ่งโครงการอันดามันฮับเมดิคอลเน็ตเวิร์กนะครับสืบเนื่องจากว่าเราเนี่ยเรามองว่าประเทศไทยรัฐบาลเนี่ยต้องการให้มีพัฒนาเรื่องของ Thailand 4.0 นะครับเราก็มามองเรื่องของแอเรียของเราก็คือเขตภาคใต้ฝั่งอันดามัน The floating doctor project is seen as such a success that there are plans to introduce two more boats at Phuket and Krabi taking the number in service to five. Doctors say getting to the sick and injured quickly is essential if they are to survive. Many already have cause to be thankful. People who, in the past, would have lost their lives, now alive and well, and living to tell the tale. Other measures to improve safety for tourists include putting in more stringent standards for tour buses. Apart from vehicle checks, bus drivers must receive proper training, must observe limited driving hours, and of course, must drive responsibly. Authorities are also on the lookout for illegal tour boats and unlicensed captains, and have made hundreds of arrests since mid-2018. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Martin Lowe in Bangkok. Thanks for watching and join us again on Assignment Asia. Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media.